What do you get when you take three Falcon 9 boosters and strap them together? Well, a Falcon Heavy, of course. The world's third most powerful rocket currently in operation, only to the Starship. Though SpaceX doesn't get to launch it often, when they do, it's a spectacular launch that leaves the rest of us in awe, especially the U.S.'s leading aerospace agency, NASA. So, how did SpaceX's Falcon Heavy's launches pour cold water on NASA's rocket? Let's find out in today's episode of Alpha Tech. Let's be very honest, we don't have a commercially available heavy lift vehicle. The Falcon 9 Heavy may someday come about. It's on the drawing board right now. SLS is real. This is a famous quote in the aerospace industry, uttered by former NASA Administrator Charlie Bolden in 2014. Not surprisingly, this becomes the focus when mentioning Falcon Heavy. The exact reason? It's failed sarcasm. When envisioned in 2010, the SLS had the potential to become the largest and most powerful rocket in the world. With cost-effective and rapid manufacturing due to its use of readily available components, such as engines and boosters from the space shuttle program. Meanwhile, the Falcon Heavy was simply a concept, SpaceX's first attempt at a heavy-lift orbital vehicle, roughly comparable in payload capacity to SLS. However, luck has not been on SLS's side as it faced continued delays and budget controversies within the government's organization. It only launched once in 2022 and has not relaunched since. There are speculations that its new variant has not been completed yet. In contrast, the Falcon Heavy has seen significant development, successfully launching in 2018 and securing numerous commercial contracts. In five years, it launched a total of nine times, and there are 12 remaining launches waiting for the launch schedule to be set. Although not as frequent as the Falcon 9, it remains one of the most anticipated rockets upon its debut. The rocket, when launched, can generate a thrust of 5 million pounds during liftoff. This is equivalent to approximately 18 Boeing 747s. The Falcon Heavy comprises three Falcon 9 rocket cores, which are combined to create a powerful launch vehicle. The two side boosters are modified with Falcon 9 first stages, while the center core is a strengthened Falcon 9 core with additional structural support. The spectacle of three boosters returning to Earth for landing creates an incredibly impressive display, something NASA's SLS just never will accomplish. In reality, if I were NASA, I'd immediately cancel SLS and instead exclusively utilize Falcon Heavy. The SLS is not developed with a budget vastly higher than that of Falcon Heavy, but its architecture is also based on outdated ideas and hardware. In theory, the SLS could compete with a Falcon Heavy in terms of absolute power, but the SLS is a joke. Let's consider more carefully. The Space Launch System SLS program at the time of its initial prototype operation had consumed a total of 11.8 billion US dollars. And you know how much it cost to develop Falcon Heavy? 500 million US dollars. And all that came from private funding without a single penny from the federal government. Though indeed NASA and Air Force have contributed funding to the program, it came in the form of launch and development contracts. These government agencies are essentially hiring SpaceX to launch their payloads and develop platforms that they themselves could potentially use in the future. Therefore, any funds SpaceX receives through these contracts can be just considered revenue. And these revenues are used to develop the program. It can be entirely seen as private funding. The cost is 20 times cheaper than the development cost of SLS alone. Considering the launch costs, it's roughly estimated that for each SLS launch, NASA spends about $4.1 billion, equivalent to eight times the amount needed to develop Falcon Heavy. However, for the Falcon Heavy, each launch comes at a price tag of $97 million US dollars per launch, as quoted by SpaceX. Doing basic math, we know that the cost of one SLS, you could have 40 launches for the same amount of money on Falcon Heavy. This means the total payload that the Falcon Heavy can deliver to LEO is over 2,000 tons, compared to 130 tons that SLS delivers to lower Earth orbit. This still doesn't include the potential for reusability either. Flying on a reusable Falcon Heavy reduced cost by 10%, equivalent to $87 million for a reused Falcon Heavy. You don't need to be a professional analyst to figure out which one's more economically viable in the long run. The Falcon Heavy utilizes top-tier engines produced by SpaceX along with all components to form a single rocket. On the other hand, the SLS uses derivative engines from the retired Space Shuttle main engines, SSMEs. These are not only expensive to make, but also costly to maintain post-launch. Heck, this program relies on outdated technologies to the extent that initial flights of the rocket are carried out using leftover SSMEs from the Space Shuttle program, which ceased existence over a decade ago. There's absolutely no innovation in the engine department, and that's partly why the admiration of most space enthusiasts towards NASA 
has significantly waned following SpaceX's successes. The fact that it's not reusable, while SpaceX has been doing this for almost half a decade, also proves that SLS is just outdated and needs to be halted. It's devouring NASA's already deficient budget. For the current trend in the aerospace industry, the key to making space more accessible for humans undoubtedly lies in reusable technology. And that's also the only way to develop and expand this industry, a realm once thought to be exclusive to government agencies and idle billionaires. That's why, instead of standing still like NASA, SpaceX has been developing its capabilities by not only being able to reuse the first stage of its Falcon rocket, but also attempting to reuse a portion of its second stage, namely the fairing. For me, never did I expect to be excited about the reuse of a fairing. I can't believe how far SpaceX has managed to push reusability without any signs of slowing. Actually, SpaceX started expanding fairing reuse since 2020 to drive down launch costs. During a rocket launch, a fairing sits right at the top of the launch vehicle as the rocket accelerates through the Earth's atmosphere. The purpose of this component is to protect the rocket's payload from aerodynamic and atmospheric forces that the vehicle, which often goes supersonic during flight, encounters during its ascent. SpaceX's primary achievement in the industry has been to develop a reusable first-stage rocket, which significantly brings down the cost of launches and makes access to space easier. The bulk of the cost savings from reusing the first stage for a rocket, the part that separates once the vehicle escapes the atmosphere, comes from engine reuse, with the components not only being costly, but highly complex to manufacture as well. Once SpaceX had worked out the kinks of landing its first stage Falcon 9 boosters, the company was left with the second largest driver of launch costs, aka the second stage in the payload fairing. In an interview back in 2020, Elon shared the launch costs of the Falcon 9 and their primary drivers. According to him, once a Falcon 9 first stage has been reused, the marginal cost, the cost for a subsequent launch for the rocket, drops to $15 million. This cost covers areas such as a brand new second stage, which costs roughly $10 million, and booster and fairing recovery, fuel, and refurbishment costs for the rest. While they appear to be simple on the surface, a payload fairing itself comes with a host of sensors, thrusters, a heat shield, and a parachute, among other components. Each fairing half has its own thrusters that help orient it for re-entry into the Earth's atmosphere. These thrusters make sure that the exterior of the components facing toward the ground as it re-enters, which protects its avionics and other sensitive components. All these naturally drive up the cost of using new ones every time a rocket's launched. A fairing consisting of two halves costs $6 million to manufacture, revealed by Musk in a 2017 press conference following the launch of SESSA's SES-10 communications satellite. Assuming that refurbishment requires roughly a million and a half, SpaceX saves about $4.5 million. Besides, the reuse of rocket components, including fairings, is a groundbreaking practice that has the potential to redefine the economics of space exploration. Traditional space missions often involve the disposal of expensive hardware after a single use, contributing to the massive costs that are associated with space travel. SpaceX's commitment to reusability addresses this challenge head-on making space exploration more cost-effective and environmentally sustainable. And that's it for today's episode. Thanks so much for watching and hope to see you next time. Bye.